Hello viewers, just a note to point out, this video is a representation and is based upon an AI document. You can take a look at the following URL. And the robot shown in this document for AI is meant to convey the meanings of each of the concepts and not to demonstrate humanoid bias. AI can be humanoid-like, a simulation of a brain in a computer, and more. Designing a strong AI, or artificial intelligence, is akin to having a capable captain navigate a ship of passengers. Whether the ship safely arrives at the passenger's destinations depends on the captain's experience and training. The captain's expertise is akin to an AI's initial design. Today, some are concerned that a value-based ethics framework programmed into an AI would result in some sort of psychopathy. In other words, many fear that future AIs could turn into the computerized equivalent of psychopaths. How can we, instead, program in altruism to create truly ethical and human-friendly artificial intelligence? Over the years, there have been numerous advancements in AI that you probably didn't recognize as such, despite widespread use. These include virtual agents, pattern and speech recognition, and targeted advertising. AI already plays a role in our everyday lives, and as advancements continue, it's important for people to understand it and get used to it. The primary objective of AI research is to create a discerning machine that is fit for planning, thinking dynamically. Arranging. Solving problems. Appreciating complex thoughts. Taking in information rapidly and always learning. This amounts to the generally accepted description of human intelligence. As AI advances toward human levels of intelligence and decision-making, the moral questions become imperative. How does one include ethics, the ability to decide correctly between right and wrong, into AI design? This begins with two universally accepted concepts, to benefit humans and to do no harm. The problem is that different societal groups have their own ideas about benefit and harm. When we look into these groups, we find specific ethical traditions and preferences. Such groups might find certain AI decisions unacceptable. Therefore, we cannot come to a universal framework of values for all AIs. Why not tailor AIs then for their intended region? That could work. However, what if certain accepted behavior in a culture is, in fact, unethical? Might this provide an opportunity for the culture to learn from the AI? For now, let's look at a simple fact. By programming in numerous rules without empathy or the reasons those rules exist, we may end up with AIs that mimic human ethics without understanding them. Such an AI may behave exactly as we want it to, but would be merely ethically compliant rather than ethical. How might that look in the real world? Suppose all oranges become infected, so people stop eating them, and this becomes a societal rule. That reason is ethical, in place to prevent harm to people. Over the generations, if people continue to abstain from eating oranges even after the infection is in the past, the underlying ethical reason will no longer exist, so not eating them has no ethical basis. An AI taught this rule might keep oranges out of people's diet even when they need the source of vitamin C. The goal should be to create an AI that can assess different situations, comprehend its environment, and understand how to respond to different possible situations. It needs to be designed as altruistic and socially intelligent. It also needs to be creative, allowing it to solve and manage problems it has never encountered. An altruistic AI should understand altruism and psychopathy. As creators of AI, we must study and evaluate human altruism so that we can program an AI with truly humane and philanthropic values. In other words, we need a deeper understanding of altruism in ourselves, and that takes research. When designing an AI, we must ensure that it is shaped around the best and most positive traits of people. Our AI needs attributes such as compassion, generosity, 
the pursuit of equality, and other positive human traits. Philosophers have identified two types of empathy. The first is perceptual empathy. This is when an observer of a situation experiences emotions congruent with those of the person experiencing the situation. The second is imaginative empathy. This refers to when an observer imagines himself or herself personally having someone else's experiences. This shifts the observer's perspective and allows for empathy with the person observed. Programming perceptual empathy into AI shows promise. To this end, scientists have studied empathic responses to facial cues, suggesting that the detection of emotions in facial expressions could be related to empathic behavior. Behavior-based robotics has succeeded in using behavior imitation, which requires the sort of observation empathic AIs would need, and learning-based algorithms to create robots that work together to collect, forage, and flock. Imaginative empathy appears to be much more complex and seems to exist only in humans. Not even our non-human primate cousins seem to have imaginative empathy. Also, imaginative empathy can exist only if perceptual empathy is first present. It seems that imaginative empathy is intrinsically involved in higher level moral reasoning and behavior and is by far the more complex of the two types. For now, imaginative reasoning may be too complex to implement in artificial systems. In developing ethical AI systems, researchers have identified two major approaches. These are the top-down approach and the bottom-up approach. Each approach attempts to give the AI an ethical framework, allowing it to make decisions. The top-down approach works by taking an ethical task or question and breaking it into sub-units. At each level, it decides what is ethical versus unethical. Eventually, the AI has mapped out what it considers the appropriate ethical actions to take. The problem is this requires the creators to program in a complex set of unchanging ethical principles. This leads to a rigid and unchanging framework. As society changes, the AI will remain behind the times. Top-down is akin to Isaac Asimov's three laws of robotics. Namely, that 1. A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. 2. A robot must obey orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And 3. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. These rigid laws could lead to conflicts in the AI and to unethical decisions. Most people consider physically harming an attacker permissible as self-defense or in-defense of another. However, a robot following Asimov's laws would encounter a paradox. It cannot stop the attacker because the first law prohibits harming a human, yet it also cannot allow the attacker to harm another. Essentially, it is difficult to impossible to program in every possible dataset. This makes the likelihood of ethical flaws much higher than compared to the bottom-up approach, which is not rigid or pre-programmed, and is therefore capable of adapting to situations that weren't anticipated. So, how does the bottom-up approach work? Unlike the top-down approach, the bottom-up approach uses inductive reasoning, weighs ethically relevant features like an action's benefits, harms, and autonomy. It analyzes result in ethical rules that allows the AI to better distinguish between right and wrong. The bottom-up approach operates without predetermined ethical principles, allowing the AI to reach its conclusions autonomously. The AI can judge consequences rather than motivation. Does an action benefit people? Does it harm people? The answers will determine if the action is ethical or not. Therefore, we should use the bottom-up approach for programming ethics into artificial intelligence. It can be difficult to verify whether the AI is correctly following its bottom-up programming. How can we be sure our AI will, in fact, be ethical? The best solution currently is having a human ethicist tackle the same issues. Those can then be compared to what the AI decides. If the AI system answers similarly enough to the human, it is deemed to have passed an ethical Turing test and to be operating correctly. 
Human brains have a mechanism for learning from the actions of others. It also allows humans to understand the intention behind and the goal of an observed act. The mechanism is mirror neurons, brain cells that analyze and mimic the actions and intentions of the observed party. By analyzing how mirror neurons work in humans, researchers hope to learn to implement similar structures into AI systems. Two major components of an AI that can make good, ethical decisions are efficiency and empathy. The potential conflict between these two is known as the ethical paradox. Of the two, empathy is far more important. Therefore, designers must ensure that efficiency never defeats the ability for the AI to be empathetic. The AI must be able to instantly opt out of being efficient to show compassion when the situation requires it. One way to help with this is to provide the AI with a lessons learned database. The database would contain decisions humans made in difficult ethical situations in the past to help the AI make its own decisions in the present. Consider the following ethical dilemma. An airplane pilot loses nearly all control of his plane. He can either steer the plane and crash it into a less populated area, or he can allow the plane to take its own course and crash into a more populated area. Choosing to steer the plane into a less populated area is empathy over efficiency. It takes more work, but saves more lives. However, more lives saved isn't always the most ethical choice. Here's a counterexample. A doctor is in urgent need of vital organs to save five patients. A person then arrives at the doctor's clinic whose organs match the exact needs of the five patients. Should the doctor sacrifice the newcomer against his will to save the five patients? Most people would say no. In fact, that's murder, and we would consider that abhorrent. Ignoring the legality of this, for the moment, it would be more efficient for the doctor to kill the individual rather than waiting for five organs to become available, but it would not be empathetic. Therefore, it is important for an ethical AI to place empathy over efficiency because it is important for those designing an AI to structure it in such a way that it evaluates situations as an empathic person would. Next, an AI needs to understand context. Imagine that an AI has been given the task of weighing the negative versus the positive traits of a person. Then consider the following situation. A person's house burns down. She becomes frustrated and angry. In her distress, she utters foul language, punches a tree, and sobs. She has just lost everything she owns. Another person would understand her behavior based on context, which is that she has just endured a tragedy. An AI, unable to consider the context, would tally the person's actions, pounding on the tree, cursing aloud, and label her an undesirable, badly behaved person, when in reality, she may be a very good person. Therefore, it's also important to program an AI with the ability to understand actions and decisions in context. As we've illustrated, we don't want an AI that is simply programmed with a culture's moral rules. Such an AI would be ethically compliant in many circumstances, but in many situations, it could deviate, perhaps dangerously, from human ethical behavior. Instead, an AI should be designed with the ability to look at why and how particular systems, beliefs, codes, and values are the way they are for humans, and to make decisions based on how empathy, context, and prior ethical decisions were made by humans. Our AI should show wisdom and compassion. If we are destined to live in a society where AIs make important decisions, we must ensure that those decisions match a high standard of ethics for the good of individuals and for mankind as a whole.